So in this video, we're going to give a little bit of motivation for the quadratic formula. <clears throat> so kind of going back to a little bit of historical motivation, um, we kind of first find a method that's going to be equivalent to the quadratic formula called completing the square. And that was actually used by the Babylonians about 400 BC. Now, to kind of give you a historical and religious point of reference for this, um, when we talk about the Jewish exile into Babylon, um, that's going to occur probably about 608 to 538 BC. And so we're finding um, remnants about 400 BC for the quadratic formula, or something equivalent to the quadratic formula, and... Um, not much of a time discrepancy for when the Jews went into Babylon. And kind of even going back a little bit further, <clears throat> if we look at um, a couple of Babylonian clay tablets, the Plimpton 322 and YBC 7289. Now, these are clay tablets, and on these clay tablets, um, on Plimpton 322, we find a list of Pythagorean triples, so things like 5 squared plus 12 squared is 13 squared. And on YBC 7289, we find a base 60 decimal expansion of the square root of 2. Now, we actually find these... Um, <clears throat> These two clay tablets um, are dated back to be somewhere between 1800 and 1600 BC. Now, also to put some um, perspective on that, um, it's kind of estimated that Abram was probably called out of Ur of the Chaldees at about 1950 BC. So just to give you an idea about, um, relatively speaking, how old some of this mathematics is and kind of what was going on um, in the same exact areas at the same exact times, um, it's kind of interesting to, uh, to take a look at that. Now, later on, we see some kind of later advancements. So going forward a lot now, actually, we see some later advancements by Hindu mathematician, um, in particular, Brahmagupta around 600 AD. And then we kind of get more of the more modern formulation of the quadratic formula and actually a proof as to why it works. Um, again, using completing the square by Al Khwarizmi about 800 AD. And so. Um, Hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of a little bit of how old some of this mathematics is and kind of also um, some perspective as far as where it kind of fits in with biblical history. Now you can say, well, all right, so that's a little bit of the history about it. What about the purpose? What's really the quadratic formula for? And to be honest, it's used to solve equations that have the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, where we're just choosing a, b, and c to be some numbers. Now, if we look at the graphs of equations, which are given by y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, now these graphs are called parabolas. And they're basically going to have a shape something like this. Now, this is in pretty big contrast to maybe what we've seen um, before with graphing lines and linear equations. So things are just straight. Parabolas are going to curve. And they're probably the next most complicated family of graphs um, that we could really look at. Now, what the quadratic formula actually gives you about these graphs is it gives you the x-intercepts of the graphs. And so just to kind of remind you that the x-intercepts are going to be the points on the graph where the graph does cross the x-axis. And so kind of seeing here, where we're crossing the x-axis there, we're crossing the x-axis there, those are going to be our x-intercepts. Now, sometimes you might see x-intercepts or kind of words used interchangeably with x-intercepts. Sometimes you might see them called zeros of the graph. Other times you might see them called roots of the graph or roots of the quadratic equation. Um, those kinds of are really terminology that are 
you can pretty much use the same words to, to talk about a variety of things. And so anytime that you see x-intercepts, zeros, or roots, those are really talking about the same things. Now, where would these kind of equations kind of arise? Well, kind of one natural place is when you're looking at something like this. So suppose you've got... Um, you're interested in fencing in an area and you're fencing in an area let's say that you're fencing it in along a river running along one side and you've got three other sides that you're fencing in and we know that the area is going to be given by x times y now to kind of complicate things just a little bit we've got a total of 500 feet of fencing that we are allowed to use that's all we've got and so this gives us constraint. Um, we can't just have as big an area as we want. We've got this area constrained. And so a question is, how big an area can I actually fence in with this constraint of only having 500 feet of fencing? Well, kind of where these equations pop up, we have our constraints. So we've got um, two x values, one y value for the length of fencing that we're allowed to have. Kind of rearranging those terms, we can get y is going to be 500 minus 2x. If we take that and plug that into our formula for the area, what happens is we get an expression for the area, which is a quadratic equation. So it is one of those things of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. And so situations like this, when you're talking about area, um, areas of rectangles subject to some kind of constraints, then that's where these quadratic equations kind of naturally begin to arise. Now, for these quadratics, kind of points of interest that we're going to um, be looking at are things like, um, well, this point down here at the bottom where the parabola is going to change direction, it's called the vertex. Um, we've already kind of talked about the x-intercepts. So we've got an x-intercept there, an x-intercept there, the roots of the equation. Um, we've got another thing called the axis of symmetry. Now, symmetry, um, that axis of symmetry is really just meaning that if I took this um, graph and I folded it around that line, that the left-hand side is going to exactly match up to the right-hand side. Um, so that the line for which I can do that is called the axis of symmetry. And then also another thing that I'm going to be interested in is, does this parabola open up or open down? And... Um, so kind of all of that information, the quadratic formula will actually give us all that information. Um, it's going to give us all the information we possibly need to know anything that we would be interested in about these parabolas. And so the quadratic formula, we can really think of it as being kind of a Swiss Army knife for these kinds of problems. It's got a can opener in it. It's got a knife in it. It's got a screwdriver. It's got everything you could possibly need. It's got those tools all in one location. And that's what the quadratic formula is. If you know how to read it, correctly and know how to get the information out of it then it will give you a wealth of information and so that's kind of the reason for really looking at it and so hopefully this has been a little bit of motivation for you as to seeing why we might be interested in these kinds of problems and so now we'll follow that up with really beginning to dig into the quadratic formula take a look at what it really is and all of the kind of pieces and moving parts that go into it so stay tuned for that